In this video, we're going to learn how to apply database migrations for Spring Boot applications backed by MongoDB using a library called Mongo. We're going to pick up from where we left off in part one of this tutorial series, where we configured a Spring Boot application with MongoDB and created a simple REST API for the expense tracker application. So let's jump right into the video without any further delay. Hello and welcome to Programming Techie where I teach you how to become a confident Java developer by teaching you how to build real world projects and improving your programming skills. So if you are interested in this, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to join us on our quest and don't forget to like the video. So let's understand why we need database migrations. If you are working on a Java project, you may have to deploy your applications in multiple environments and if you made change to the database schema, for example, you added a new field into the document or maybe you have to remove the field which is not needed inside your data model anymore or maybe you have to do a mass update of some records inside the collection. So you can either do these changes manually in each environment or you can automate them with the help of some different tools. If you are coming from a relational database background, you may be aware of tools like Flyway or Liquibase which helps us to do this automatic database migration. In the MongoDB world, we have a library called as Mongoc, which helps us in running automatic uh, database migrations. So let's go ahead and see how we can install this library into our existing project. So I opened the Mongoc website and here you can see that it is a Java MongoDB tool for tracking, managing and applying database schema changes across all our environment based on a coding approach. As of now, this is the most up-to-date MongoDB migration library in the market. It supports the latest MongoDB versions and also provides good integration with the Spring framework. So to get started, we have to add some dependencies into our Maven project. For that, we have to import the MongoDB BOM project, which is, a, which is called as a Bills of Material uh, dependency, which is used to manage the versions of the, all the dependencies of the MongoDB project. This is usually declared inside the dependency management section of the BOM.xml file. If you are not aware of what is dependency management and why to use this, you can check out the Maven tutorial in my channel where I explain you in detail about all the concepts of the dependency management. So we have to copy this MongoDB Bills of Material dependency into our BOM.xml file. The latest version of this dependency is 4.1.19 at the time of recording this video. If you are watching this video later, just check whether there are any latest versions of this dependency by pressing the control space keyboard combination so that IntelliJ will use the latest dependency. So after the builds of material dependency, we need to import the mongoc runner that is the mongoc spring version 5 dependency, the spring data mongodb driver from mongoc. And according to the MongoDB website, we have to also download the MongoDB driver. But as we are already using the Spring Data MongoDB, the MongoDB Java driver is already downloaded to our project as a transitive dependency. So there is no need to specify this again. Once all these dependencies are configured, just make sure you run the Maven import by clicking on the Maven icon to the top right corner of the screen. And if you check the Maven dependencies, you should see all the MongoDB dependency information. So the next step is to enable mongoc in our project. We can do that by using the enable mongoc annotation which is provided by the spring mongoc runner. So I'm going to open the spring boot application class and add this annotation to the top of the class. After that we have to tell mongoc where it can find our database migration related code. For that I'm going to create a new package called as config and create a class called as database change log. So in a mongoc terminology a change log is nothing but Java class which runs the database migrations. Mongo can identify a change log using the change log annotation. So I'm going to add this annotation to the class. And now we have to point to Mongo where it can find this change log class by specifying the property mongo.changelogs scan package and the value I'm going to give as com.programmingtiki .mongo.config. So at the time of startup, Mongo will scan this package and identify the change log class and analyze all the necessary database changes inside the class. So one thing to note is that it's not uh, mandatory to have only one uh, changelog class. You can have any number of changelog classes. Mongoc will uh, identify the changelog classes and apply them at the time of startup. So now let's go ahead and start writing some changes we want to apply to our database. At the start of the application, I want to add some sample data to our expense collection. And to do that, we can write some methods inside the database changelog class. And these methods are called as change sets. So let's create a method called as cdatabase 
And on top of this method, I'm going to add an annotation chain set. And, and this annotation takes in different properties. The first one is order. So we can specify in which order a change log should execute this chain sets. So if we have multiple chain sets, we have to execute sequentially and this will be done based on this order. And uh, the next property is ID, which is unique identifier for each chain set. And lastly, we have the author field. Inside the method, I'm going to quickly create some sample data. And to be able to save this data to the database, I need access to the expense repository. So Mongoc provides different options to save the data to the database. We can either make use of the MongoDB interface from the MongoDB Java driver, or we can use the Mongoc template, which is a custom class from the Mongoc library. And lastly, we can also use a specific custom bean. Uh, in our case, it can be the expense repository interface from Spring Data. So in this case, we can add the expense repository as a parameter to the change set method and Mongoc will automatically inject it. So I'm going to save this data using the insert method of the expense repository. So now let's test our changes. I'm going to start the application. And if you carefully observe the logs, you can see that the change log is first acquiring a log over the database and then applying the database changes. Once this is finished, it is releasing the log. And you can track how Mongoc is managing the change logs using the Mongoc change log database. If the database migration is completed successfully, Mongoc creates this Mongoc change log uh, database and inserts all the change log entries into it. Once the migration is completed, the change log entries will be um, changed to the status executed. And it also stores other information like the change ID, change set method name, and the change log class, etc. So in this way, you can apply MongoDB migrations to your Spring Boot application. So this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something from this and I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies.